Right, good morning, welcome on board. If it looks like it's early, it's because it is. Uh, we just jumped in the airplane uh, and started it on a long journey uh, up to St. George. We're actually going to a station outside of, of uh, St. George in Queensland. We are in Tyre, Victoria, uh, about 650 miles to go. Uh, long day, uh, but uh, we got a nicely equipped Vixen, which is going uh, to be used uh, as a station airplane up there, and I'm uh, delivering it. So I thought you can join me up uh, for this journey. As you can see, it's a Y-stick uh, Vixen uh, with a Dyna Autopilot, Dyna T10A, a Garmin 660, which is wired uh, to the Dyna, and a nice ray mount for the iPad. Using uh, airplane uh, on the iPad as backup. Got my breakfast ready. Plenty of drinks in the back. Sunscreen and hat. Gonna be very hot. Apparently, it's a fairly cool day with only 39 degrees up there. Um, anyway, join me. Join me along, and uh, yeah, we'll see how the day goes. After departure, we're still on climb, just uh, coming up to uh, four and a half, uh, getting off the steps, uh, and uh, having spoken to uh, to the Bureau of Meteorology and had a look at the weather. Uh, there's uh, quite a big uh, cold front or low coming uh, coming in, and there's a lot of wind, a lot of wind, and there's a bit of wind from the north. So immediately after departure, I saw head speed of. Uh, ground speed uh, of 35 knots, uh, a huge amount of winds between a thousand feet and about two and a half, uh, passing over three and a half, it sort of reduced a bit and now, uh, yeah, now there's not much. Approaching Tegati right now, it's 32 minutes into the flight, still quite a bit of uh, headwind, uh, doing over the ground 19 knots. Uh, time for lunch, look at my yard. Lunch, I should say breakfast. It's passing through the Great Divide right now, as you can see, high terrain here, it's getting a bit smoother. Still quite windy, but uh, but much uh, much nicer to fly. Brand new airplane, ticking now, uh, passing now. Uh, 4.2 hours on the engine. Uh, probably only have uh, three hours flight time. And uh, yeah, all going all right. I check the UHF. Everybody's talking on the UHF, which is quite nice. And uh, I've got my uh, airplane on uh, the iPad. A 660D10A and the iPad and the iPhone uh, on the side there, so all is under control. Um, we are five uh, five miles south of Wangareta Airport. Might be hard to see with the wide lens, but uh, just down there we had 7,500. Uh, truing at 115, uh, ground speeding at 111, so we're much better now. Uh, sort of crossing north of the divide, so we're looking a bit better. So I was initially planning to land in Wangareda, uh, based on the forecast of uh, 25 knots sort of wind. Uh, however, now when we know uh, we got good speeds and I can continue on, uh, I will uh, take it to tomorrow. So it will make it uh, two hours and 35 minutes in the cockpit uh, between uh, takeoff and our first stop. Just uh, shy of 5.2 on the RPM, uh, ground spinning 110, truing at 111, 113, so not much wind, which is great. Taking passing five hours on the plane is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of traffic, a wind doing some training at the Wangareda, and 
couple of rampies flying around, so it's a beautiful day for it. Too, huh? We have decided to veer uh, to Woga um, and change track uh, instead of going to Tamora. It's another half an hour, we just decided to go to Woga. My bladder is not as strong as I hoped it to be. Uh, so we are, what are we are, 20, uh, 20, 21 to run to Woga, seven and a half. We had uh, great ground speed uh, so far at uh, 110 plus, uh, 11 and a half. Firstly, it's a Vixen, so it's a, a, a bit slicker version of the Foxbat, uh, although it does enjoy the same slow uh, fly characteristics that the Foxbat and the Kelpie enjoy. Uh, matter of fact, it actually stalls one knot slower, which is pretty incredible. Vix this Vixen is equipped also with an autopilot, uh, coupled to the D10 A, and using an Air Gizmo and 660 Garmin, it's all coupled together nicely, so right now I'm uh, on the nav mode um, and tracking uh, what the GPS sort of uh, relays to the, to the D10, which is pretty cool. It also got the Mastering Siren, this is uh, an Australian warning system uh, siren, it is extremely loud, it's mounted nicely uh, in the car uh, with a control unit under the passenger seat. Uh, it also has the GME 3500. We 70, uh, 74 miles to run to Dabo. Uh, initially I decided to stop at parks for fuel and then saw that we're getting a fairly good speed over the ground so decided to keep, it, uh, keep going to Dabo. Also had a good look at the weather, it seemed like there's a bit of a uh, thunderstorm and uh, sort of summer uh, towering cumulus have been developing uh, with a bit of drizzle already and it is not even 11 o'clock uh, up uh, sort of the Queensland border. So we'll keep a good eye on that, uh, decide I'll make a call uh, on the weather, just the parting of Dabo, after a full tank of fuel and we'll take it from there. So yeah, quite, uh, quite a substantial inversion uh, going on, but uh, anyway, it's just a hot day. Uh, otherwise, all good fun, airplane performing nicely. Yeah. Bears, I highly recommend. This is the beautiful Vixen. Double. Uh, we're coming up to a town called Conombo, um, and then uh, from there another, well we got another 43 minutes to run to get to Walgett. So otherwise the uh, condition are favorable. I've spoke to the Bureau of Meteorology uh, in Queensland. I spoke initially to New South Wales, they said oh you better call Queensland, so I did to get a bit of a clearer idea because all I could hear on the radio is uh, uh, five mile right of track, six mile left of track, up, down, everybody's uh, veering and uh, yeah, taking uh, alternate route to avoid some uh, thunderstorm and, and, uh, and clouds, a bit of uh, development. So anyway, I'm trying to do the same. Unfortunately, I can't go any higher uh, and don't want to go any lower because it's bumpy. Uh, so I'm uh, still at seven and a half. And uh, yeah, hoping uh, hoping to have a, a nice ride all the way to the end uh, till we get to Walgett. The Walgett will get some fuel, then we'll check again, make sure that there's nothing been developed since, because uh, it's still about two hours since we're going to be uh, at our destination. And uh, talking about our destination, we are going to a station which is southwest of St. George. Uh, the owner, Jeremy, who uh, purchased this beautiful airplane, uh, have his own strip, so we're gonna go there, stay the night with him. Uh, we might do some training uh, on the Vixen uh, later this afternoon, if the storms are not uh, gonna interfere. Uh, otherwise, we'll do that first thing in the morning. Uh, one six mile to run to walk it and uh, commence the sand uh, on down seven seven. <laughs> I 
don't know if this GoPro does justice to the place and how windy it is, but it is very windy. So we are in Walgate by the way, um, and uh, we got fuel, so yeah, that will be the last fuel stop. We are 14 minutes uh, since our departure from Morgan. Uh, the first 10 minutes were pretty nasty, very bumpy, very hot. Uh, it's much better now, 19, 18 degrees now, so much cooler. Fairly short leg this one, and it's the last one. Uh, only 85 miles to go. Now, I've never been at uh, Jeremy Station. Uh, i only seen sunlight uh, pictures of it. So we'll do a good check of the runway and uh, south south where the wind from wouldn't be too far uh, off what it was in Walgate, which is uh, east northeast. We are 27 minutes, uh, 27 miles, sorry, to run to, uh, to Jeremy's house. Um, unfortunately, as you can see, we are underneath the clouds. Uh, we couldn't go any higher as uh, there were towering cumuluses and, and uh, developments well and truly into the flight level. So I had to descend, so I'm underneath the cloud and therefore I'm flying a little bit slower because it is very, very, very bumpy here. Uh, what is it? It's uh, 2.30 local. Um, yeah, just very, very hot. Anyway, um, we'll fly slow, enjoy the view while we can. 20 minutes uh, to go till we get to Jeremy house. And uh, yeah, next time I catch up with you, we'll be on the ground with Jeremy. So, uh, stay tuned. property and why they need an airplane so why, why you don't drive so yeah Jeremy would you mind repeating that please yeah so the property we're on at the moment which is book book we're right here at the homestead and uh, this place is about 25,000 acres right. um, on this side to the south down here it borders our other station which is Oakey Park um, it's about the same it's about 25,000 acres again it's mostly where all our farming and sheep are and then on the northern border of that property, we border our other two properties, which is Kyena and Balmoral. And they're sort of another 40,000 acres. So right. it keeps us very busy and there's a, a lot to get around. Yeah, I can see. And what do you utilize the airplane for? Uh, mostly for checking all the waters. So as you can see, there's you know hundreds of waters that we've got to get around. Right. Are there water balls for the... For yeah, the... each one of those blue dots has a tank for right. its own trough and at each blue dot there could be two or three different troughs running off every tank. Right. Um, so to drive around you know, on the ground and get to every single one of those troughs would take a number of days um, and we can do it in you know, a maximum of two hours from the air. Wow, and it, it, would each trough will have like its own runway or? No, most of what we'll do, we'll have a runway or a suitable road um, within reasonable walking distance Got of it. each one. So. Um, you know, for instance, say there's a strip that runs along this fence line and it's walking distance to all these ones. There's a road down here that's suitable. Um, so yeah, reasonable walking distance. You can carry a, a you know a socket wrench or a shifting spanner to a trough and adjust levels or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's in good weather you can get around to a fair few of them. Would you know how many cattle uh, heads so you'll have here or? Yeah, well normally we would run um, about 1,500 breeders. Yep. Um, so that could be anywhere between two and 3,000 head total. Yep. Um, at the moment we've just had a pretty big sell up because of the drought and the high prices. 
Um, so yeah, we're probably still running those 1500 breeders, but not much else. Go. And would you do like a master once a year? Probably three times a year. Three times a year? Probably three times a year. Um, the sheep, you probably master more than that, depending on how much rain you've had. Right. 